marketing. She has published 45 publications in Indian and international journals. She has organized and participated in 119 workshops and seminars. Her areas of specialization is marketing and finance. Serve, she has served as board of studies member for business administration at WCC DG Vaishnava College, SIET, Dr. Ambedkar College, Stella Maris College, Loyola College Chennai, and Presidency College. She has served as additional controller of examination at Etheraj College for Women Chennai. She is the nodal officer for students project of SHGS of Indi Tamil Nadu Corporation for Development of Women LTD 2012. We feel great privilege to have you with us today, ma'am. Now, the time has arrived to add some dignity and fragrance to our session. It is the time to invite our honorable chief guest to take over the session. Thank you, Ushri, for the warm words of introduction. Um, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So the topic is uh, Global Entrepreneurial Revolution and Engaging Youth in Entrepreneurial Activities. Now, the major objective of this presentation is to highlight what is a revolution that's happening around the world in terms of entrepreneurial activities, why there is a need to engage youth in entrepreneurial activities. And I have listed out a few uh, areas where uh, youth as such can start their business with the minimum fund that is required for each of the categories that are being So first, When you talk of global entrepreneurial revolution, the reason is to why entrepreneurship is important for a country or a society. So entrepreneurship is basically a backbone of a society, which in fact uh, connects us with the global community. And it also uh, sees to that we bring in innovation or creativity, which is going to be ever evolving. Especially with this COVID-19 crisis, this crisis has revealed to all of us that uh, there had been inequities from gender inequity to racial injustice. So it's all clear now that we should move forward as a global community without uh, taking into consideration any inequities and taking the help of the neighbors, ensuring that all of us move forward in the same direction. And that is the reason why we also call it as a new normal. So a number of trends and indicators point out the fact that entrepreneurship has become truly a global phenomenon. Now, one such indicator is uh, the growing appetite among the young people to start ventures and what we call it is entrepreneurial ventures. Now, what are these uh, particular segments which needs to be classified? First one is a favorable attitude towards capitalism and social acceptance of entrepreneurs. Now all of us know what capitalism is all about. Uh, can any one of you tell me what capitalism is about? Just one word. 
Okay, let me not waste my time. So it's, a, it's basically uh, where the production is totally owned by private individuals. And of course, the market is determined by these forces, the, the private forces, the prices of the products are determined by the demand and supply, and there's always a free market competition. So favorable attitude towards capitalism and social acceptance of entrepreneurship is one such indicator that we have been observing right now. So capitalism is basically the foundation of entrepreneurship because you're giving free hand to the private individuals to work on their strengths. Now, one of the reports, what we call it as a GEM report, Global Entrepreneurial Report, it, it has proved that Americans had a positive view of capitalism and this continued to hold good for a longer period of time. So the development of a successful society rests upon the social acceptance of entrepreneurship. What is the social acceptance of entrepreneurship? Whenever somebody says he or she is into a business, there's always a thought that they will not do well. And there are a lot of hurdles for them to continue their business they don't support, the society does not support them, they don't motivate them, but only when there is social acceptance, entrepreneurial activities can flourish. So positive developments on this front is worth noting only in emerging economies. The next one is about youth engagement in entrepreneurial activities. So this is something that is most encouraging in the global entrepreneurship scenario. So in recent years, you can see young people's desire to become entrepreneurs and their active engagement in entrepreneurial activities in emerging economies. Again, one of the World Bank report, it says that Latin American youth have reported a desire to become entrepreneur, which was not the case earlier. Likewise, there are uh, people from the Southeast countries and what is called as uh, the Gulf Council countries like South Arabia, UAE, in all these countries, you can see increasing number of youth uh, involved in entrepreneurial activities. Like you can to account the average age with which these people, it is very, uh, in fact, it is quite uh, uh, Thank you. 
Ma'am, hello. Ma'am, your voice is not audible, ma'am. Okay. Idhar lende ma. From last slide, ma'am. May audible? Yes, ma'am. Where should I start from? You were talking about. Tell me the slide from which I should start, ma. Hello. Yes, ma'am. We can proceed. Tell me. Tell me the slide. I'm next slide. From which I should start again. Slide we have been completed, ma'am. Next slide, ma'am. Okay, I'll just go through this quickly. So when we talk of uh, capitalism, I told you the characteristic features of capitalism, and the most important thing you should know here is there are uh, uh, the various types of capitalism have some kind of influence on the entrepreneurial activities. Now this capitalism, as I told you, is the foundation. for all the entrepreneurial opportunities where the means of production are mostly privately owned and the market economy operates accordingly so there are number of variations in the way in which the capitalism functions around the world or across the world and uh, as you can see in this slide there are uh, four different forms of capitalism which has been identified one is entrepreneurial capitalism second one is big firm the state guided and oligarchic so for each of these type we have a good number of examples as to how entrepreneurship is influenced because of this kind of capitalism so the first one if you take into account what is called as entrepreneurial capitalism here you can see high impact entrepreneurs what do you mean by high impact entrepreneurs they are entrepreneurs with a sound background wherein they are able to produce or have an above average impact in creating job and wealth some of the examples are given here this kind of uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurial capitalism you can find it in us for example twitter uber apple and google so they they have high impact entrepreneurs with the capacity of producing giving more jobs and increasing the wealth of the nation they also have a uh, capabilities to bring in innovative products every time you see an apple iphone there's a lot of innovation into the product as such and that is possible because of this type of capitalism another important feature of this here uh, entrepreneurial cap capitalism is that this kind of capitalism is found only is found only in western countries when you take into account the second category big firm capitalism what is absent here is that kind of radical entrepreneurship that is totally absent and this form of capitalism is mainly found in japan and some european countries 
For example, Japan has quite a number of innovative large firms. But the country has the lowest per capita income when it comes to the rate of entrepreneurial activities. Going to the third kind, some developing countries like China have found this uh, state-guided capitalism as the only way to achieve growth. So what happens here in such a model, you can find that the government guides the market. So it is ultimately the government which guides the market and typically by supporting only very few industries and these industries are generally expected to perform well. So meaning to say only when they find there is a prospect for a kind of industry, you have some sort of guidance and assistance from the government. The, the last one is oligarchic capitalism, where you have small group of individuals and families. What they do is they control the majority of the country's wealth and power. Like how what's happening in India, you have Tatas and Billas. So these uh, family as such, they will try to control the wealth and power of the nation. So this form of capitalism here, the entrepreneurs use their political power, their capital. They have a lot of social networks and in turn, they maximize their profits. You can find these uh, type of oligarchs in Ukraine also. Uh, Ukraine is quite famous now because of the Russian war as such. So these are the different types of capitalism and their influence on entrepreneurial activities. The next one is variations in entrepreneurial activities across the world. What are the variations that you can see? Some of the important international differences that you can find in terms of entrepreneurial opportunities or behaviors and performance. For example, economies as such, the countries worldwide differ in terms of population and in terms of population's willingness to engage in entrepreneurial activities, as well as the type or nature of activities they are interested in. Now, if you take an example of Indonesia, only 0.18% of the population is engaged in entrepreneurial activities compared to 7.5%, 7.5%, which is what is happening in US. So what is required here is there are variations and these variations are mainly because of the mindset of the population involved in entrepreneurial activities. The next one is your qualitative differences. So in addition to the quantitative variations that we saw in terms of the number of people opting for entrepreneurship, you have qual qualitative variations also. But here we talk about the high impact entrepreneurs, which is uh, lacking in many of the countries as such. So many developing countries do not provide an environment to produce highly successful entrepreneurs. For example, uh, you have Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft and Walmart's founder, Sam Walton. So these people, they are encouraged only in countries where they have some kind of assistance and support by the government as such. So when you take into consideration India, in India, you have a high performing global firms such as PCS and Infosys. But what is lacking here is the expectations from these entrepreneurs and their contribution to the per capita income of our country. The next part of the revolution is all about motivation and intended goals of entrepreneurial activities. People across the world, they differ in terms of motivation and the purpose of starting 
entrepreneurial activities or involving in entrepreneurial activities. So in most of the industrialized countries, people engage in entrepreneurial activity only to take advantage of business opportunities. And in some countries, their objective or motivation to start a business is to earn wealth. And that is nothing but the desire to make money. When you take uh, entrepreneurs from China, 60% of them, they increase their entrepreneurial activities or they go for entrepreneurial activities only with an intention to increase the income. Whereas, compare it with a country like the US, entrepreneurs in the United States, they want to involve in entrepreneurial activities only to gain independence. That is, they want to stand on their own leg. They want to earn income for themselves without any support of others. So what does it actually mean? When compared to US entrepreneurs, Chinese entrepreneurs are more likely to measure their success in terms of growth. The next part of it is about the gender bias. Everywhere, not only in India, you have this almost happening in all the countries. So large gender bias is there in the participation rate of entrepreneurial activities. When you take into account of the small and medium enterprises, probably you have women entrepreneurs or female entrepreneurs. But when it comes to high impact entrepreneurship, it is only men who dominate. What is the reason behind all this? One is lack of gender equality. Even in labor laws, if you had studied, there are laws that prevent women to work and earn more relative to men. So for example, women are not allowed to work in the night shift or in certain jobs such as manufacturing, construction, energy, agriculture, and so on, because of the risk involved in this. So women's engagement as business owners is found to be high only in Bangladesh. Which is never expected of. Women entrepreneurs in this country encounter great number of barriers. A slow rate of participation in entrepreneurship is mainly because of uh, lack of support or uh, access to advice or mentorship or money. There are so many reasons. These are the normal reasons that uh, anybody could understand. So female managed firms were less likely to obtain bank loan than male managed ones. What happens here is even the government, the government, when they provide support, finance to the entrepreneurs, to the female entrepreneurs, there is disparity. And the last one is the effects of uh, political, cultural, and rather broad environmental factors. So doing business is often uh, referred as a source to compare entrepreneurial climate in economies around the world. Now, when you talk of doing business, if you can see this particular slide, here you can see what is the total number of procedure to start a business, how long does it take uh, to start a business, and the cost. So these are the disparities that you can see across the world. So organizations for uh, <laughs> the something called OECD countries, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development of Economies, they are the best performers. For example, if you take New Zealand, if you want to start a business, uh, start a business in New Zealand, it requires only one procedure, and this procedure can be completed in a half a day, which with 
only a cost of 0.3% of the country's per capita GDP. This is not the case with uh, India. You know, the bureaucratic procedures, the cost involved, the amount you will have to uh, give by way of bribing to get licenses. All these stops entrepreneurial activities in developing countries. Well, this slide particularly tells you that a lot of the sources of entrepreneurial finances are across the world. Most of the concepts that oh, that is given here. You must be familiar with the first and the foremost one. You should know is that. Not everyone who wants to start a business or a venture can do so. What is the reason? First and foremost, access to capital. So it's considered to be a major roadblock for entrepreneurs to see to that their dreams come true when they want to start any business. So countries worldwide what happens here is that the availability of funds to meet uh, the financial needs of an entrepreneur varies. It can be a combination of this that is given here, or it can be a single source as such. So many entrepreneurs, the first and foremost thing they look out for is for a bank loan over the other forms of financing because this is quite easy to take uh, uh, finance rather than going into the capital market, raising funds, complying with the, the regulatory authorities. So economies worldwide, they differ in terms of the availability of a loan and the cost of loan financing. There are differences in the cost of lending across the world from different banks. And you all know the classification of banks also, private sector banks, public sector banks, foreign banks, cooperative banks. So when it comes to each of these kinds of banks, they have their own limits, they have their own restrictions, they have their own regulations. All these needs to be followed. And the annual lending rates of these banks also vary. The second one is your capital market. Capital market, uh, by going in for an IPO, you can raise funds, but you need to have uh, been well established for people to have confidence in you so that they can subscribe for the securities that you have floated in the market as such. So in some countries, there are lack of appropriate legal and regulatory framework in the functioning of the capital market, uh, Nigeria, for example, and uh, in this type of uh, situation or an environment, you cannot expect people to involve themselves in entrepreneurial activities. The second part, uh, the third one, the third type of resource or the source for entrepreneurial funding is venture capital. What is venture capital? It's a form of private equity capital, which is given only to capital intensive companies. On the whole, they have a bright prospects in future. So the investor may be a person or an investment firm. So the investor hopes to get a return. It is not only investment, he, he expects to get a return to events like a trade sale of the company or whatever it is. So when, it, when a company is venture capital financed, the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur's benefit is likely to reduce because there is a major role played by the venture capitalist wherein they take a part of 
the profits or the income that is being earned. So venture capital is basically attractive for new and innovative companies, but these companies will not have a good history of operation as such. So the risk is also more, and they tend to be small to raise capital in public. So venture capital funds are important, not because a large proportion of the entrepreneurs receive them, but mainly because the funding sources for high growth firms or SMEs only with innovative ideas. I don't know whether you have heard about accelerators. The new type of entrepreneurial financing is through accelerators and incubators. So what do they do? They help uh, to start up a business. What is required that you will be earning in two years? They'll help you to just gain it in a few months. So this type of financing through accelerators or accelerators as a new source of entrepreneurial financing is emerging in developed countries like US, Canada, most of the financing is from the accelerators. If you take into consideration, these accelerators do not invest in all the entrepreneurial activities. They have a specific list, like you have Internet of Things, Big Data Analytics, SaaS, FinTech, and mobile applications. So only when your entrepreneurial activity relates to such activities, you will have funding from these accelerators. Of course, you do have uh, very few accelerators in India, like uh, Cisco, you have T-Labs. Cisco is mainly uh, sponsoring for artificial intelligence because technology is the uh, most important thing that is dominating the world now. When you take into consideration United States, tech stars, what is called as a tech star. Okay. Famous accelerator. <laughs> and with the emergence of these accelerators and investment programs, other sources of financing like the venture capital it does not have much uh, demand pain. So people going for accelerators and incubators. The next one is microfinance. What is an MFI? MFI is basically an institution which borrows funds at a lower cost. Tries to keep loan defaults and overhead expenses very, very low. So these are the, the loans that are given to the entrepreneurs, typically without any collateral. This is again a major source of funding for the entrepreneurs. Of course, there are pros and cons of major finance uh, institutions because the ultimate objective of these institutions are to just increase the number of uh, uh, people availing loan without knowing that they are they will be defaulters someday. So they do not uh, do the feasibility studies whether their amount is amount is, will be returned by these entrepreneurs who take up their loans. The next one is crowdfunding. So it involves uh, taking small amount of uh, capital from large number of individuals. It is considered to be one of the major disruptors in the financing of entrepreneurial activities. Of course, uh, of late you have what is called as equity-based crowdfunding. Which is which is of uh, growing importance. I don't know how many of you would have heard about initial coin offering. Again, with the introduction of cryptocurrency, the future of crypto coins, this type of uh, financing has gained prominence in developed countries. 
So it is basically, ICO is basically a fundraising tool that will help startup companies to trade future crypto coins in exchange for cryptocurrencies of immediate value and in terms of bitcoins, the types of currencies in terms of bitcoins. So this uh, type of financing, especially this ICO, is mainly used in developed countries for startups, which can create its own cryptocurrency utilizing blockchain technology because cryptocurrencies normally work on blockchain technologies. Another one is uh, international remittances. It is again an important source of financing in many developing countries, wherein you have funding from the NRIs to see to that it is being used in a better way in their own home country. Another type of financing is called as a supply chain financing, wherein uh, here uh, the companies will collaborate with financial institutions and then they provide uh, financing and other related services. When I say related services, it is all about technical assistance, governance, legal assistance to small firms in the company supply chain. Other than this, you have informal financing sources. One is short-term loans to the borrowers, which is a, a significant form of financing in rural areas. So though we have a variety of sources, financing from accelerators and ICOs are some of the newest source of entrepreneurial financing. So, ICO and accelerators are the newest source of entrepreneurial financing that you can see in future. So uh, you must have been aware of what is called as co-working spaces. If you come across this Kotari Road, there's a place called Wakafella. So it's a co-working space which will help the entrepreneurs the like-minded people to join together, discuss everything, and then decide to start a venture. Moving on to the qualities or the traits that one should have to start a business. One is your will and determination. Now, without this willingness and dedication, you cannot start a business as such. So you should know what you love and uh, why you're doing this particular business so that you will do your work at the best. The next one is persistence. This is an attitude of not giving up. Come what may, I will not give up my objective or aim in starting a business. So there may be moments that you will not see that the things are going well. But still, only when there is this kind of determination, you can continue in your entrepreneurial journey. Otherwise, you will have to back up. The next one is self-confidence. It's one of the most important character traits. One should know the difference between uh, self-confidence and ego. Ego is not a trait of a leader. So every true leader is aware of his talents and abilities. If you want to start a business, you should know your talents, you should know your abilities and be confident in those aspects. The next one is curiosity. Entrepreneurship is almost like a science. So curiosity. When it comes to curiosity, entrepreneurship 
as I told you, is like a sign where every day there is a lot of new things happening. And every young business owner should improve his or her knowledge in different ways. So one way to improve your knowledge is to learn from your own mistakes. This may be a little painful, but uh, it also brings good lessons to your life. The second way is to read a lot. Be updated. See, check out what is happening in the particular field of your business. You should learn new things until the last moment of your life. And uh, this is possible only when you are determined to learn. Off late, you can see that uh, learning is quite easier when compared to what happened around uh, 10 to 15 years back. So physical books were the most common way of uh, studying new things. When, we, when uh, we had to refer something, we had to refer generally physical books. But now you all live in a world of technology. And this modern technology will enable you to spend only few hours in learning new things. For example, you watch videos, you read articles. This is all possible because of the technology. So always be updated. The next one is self-discipline. Every successful entrepreneur this should be the major uh, trait of a successful entrepreneur. Why you should invest time and effort in your business? Because you cannot uh, be little lethargy. Once you are little lethargy, people will try to dominate you. You should have some kind of discipline in bringing or uh, spending your time and effort in your business as such. Of course, time management. Let's uh, take a simple example of a college students. Quite often you say that uh, students complain that they don't have time. Very often, why quite often? Very often you find students complaining shortage of time as such, whether it is preparing for exams or for assignments. So this cannot be an attitude for uh, an entrepreneur as such. You should know to manage your time. Time is the most valuable thing that you should have Unfortunately, we do not have time machines. So it's your responsibility to stick on to the schedules. And finally, helping others. Teaching others is also a motivational act, kind of. You will feel proud because you're no longer a student. Step by step, you're becoming a leader. Once you start your business, you teach others. And you also become a business mentor. So having this trait is a, this kind of trait is also equally important to enhance your entrepreneurial spirit. Again, these are the small things that should be taken care of. If you want to start a business, if you have few ideas to start, so what you have to do is think and list them down. Everything starts with an idea. So the first thing is to do is to think of the businesses that you would like to have. You may focus on what makes you happy. You can also ask people around you or people whom you really trust. Just think of something you could start and list them down. You can also rank them based on the resources that you have and pick the most after weeks or month long discussions with your friends, with the, your parents, the people who you have trust. The second one is do some research on the type of business that you want to start as such. So there are enough information to check online. If you want to know about a business, you can check it out online. And you can also ask those who started the business. Planning is very, very important because you should have goal in doing your business. Without a proper plan, 
nothing will work out you cannot regret later then choose a best name choosing a name is like uh, it seems to be an easy task but uh, many had a hard time in doing it because you cannot replicate the name that has already been used so it is not just about having a cute name for your business which you like or naming your business after your favorite actor you can do so but still choosing the best name is always something that people will accept you do not want to show that you have copied a name from some other business processing of papers is set another strategic work that you might have to work on there are some businesses which do not need this some businesses which need the paperwork get along with the right people work work and work dedication as i told you is very important you can ask others who knows about a similar kind of business that you are planning to do as such get into partnership because initial stages the contribution from your partner will definitely help you in carrying on your business successfully so what are the most successful business ideas for you as such food i remember a person telling in the days we are not going to have a kitchen at home we need to say people are going to rely on the food provided by the aggregators food aggregators but again it has their own uh, pros and cons in the business as such so thinking of uh, this kind of business like your food and beverage business if you are a real foodie you love cooking you are on the right track then you can have your own restaurant and deliver it online the second one is clothes again you can turn your fashion into a passion if you are really a fashion oriented person you can share your style with others again clothes and this uh, shoe businesses are something that is very attractive the third one is child care if you want to help parents who are working or a single mom or anyone who does not have time to take care of the child then there is a high need for child care services these days that is again a good uh, kind of business that you can think of on gaming ideas if you have uh, uh, if you if, if you are very attracted to us games playing games then this is the business you can start you get to play online offline games while earning then content writing people who love to read write and share anything can check out for this kind of business this basically allows you to express your feelings while getting paid what we call it as blogging which we call it as blogging you create your own story send it to the publisher you can also write for the people who do not have time to do it a lot of things can be done literally the most simplest work that anybody can do if you are interested in teaching children and other people you can go ahead and start this business even the investment in this kind of business is almost nil it is only your brain your knowledge where you will be sharing your expertise accessories again it can be uh, jewelry which is uh, for any other accessories we get uh, accessories relating to the mobile phones or whatever it is that is again a good kind of business retailing business you can do if you have a love for cleaning the cleaning business covers wide range of services you can provide the services to others who cannot do it so another business idea is being a developer this is something that requires technical skills probably the science students can work on this in developing apps and the last one is online 
business. If, if you cannot decide on what to do it, then try doing anything on that. Whatever you do, you will 100% flourish in your business as such. You can do buying, you can sell, connect with people or post online. So try any business until you find the one that you think will work for you. What is the major takeaway here? Uh, don't be limited to the top 10 successful small business ideas. The opportunities in the world are endless. The only person who could stop you from discovering them is only yourself. So if you want to start a business, start immediately. Start. So I have a few stories of youth entrepreneurs. Sri Lakshmi is considered as the youngest CEO, the youngest web designer in the world. She's also received many awards for her talent. Apart from her e-design, she has also founded Tiny Logo. She's a techie. She's done this Tilak Mehta. He started at the age of 16, what is called as paper and parcels, a flourishing entrepreneur. We have Ajit Navalka, podcast host, Madan Gauri. Look at his uh, YouTube subscribers, 6.7 million and Instagram, 2.1 million followers. Shravan and uh, Sanjay Kumaran, 18 and 17 year old. They started developing gaming apps instead of playing. These are the examples of young entrepreneurs. Prithi Shagarwal, his area of expertise is hotel industry. Oyo, you must have heard of Oyo. Shantanu Naidu. So you can also be one who will be spoken of in future. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Girls, if you have any questions, you can ask me, ma'am. Ma'am? Right. Ma'am, what advice would you give to a person who is going to start their own business, ma'am? Voice is breaking. Okay, can you just type it out in the chat box? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what is the question? Can you just type it out? Or oh, tell me now. Now you are audible. Tell me now. Typing. Hello. What is the question? Ma'am, she has asked, what is the hardest part 
of being an entrepreneur? There's nothing called hardest part. This is such if you have. Uh, a predecessor, then your path is quite easy. Otherwise, it takes its own natural shape, isn't it? You will have to come across almost all the problems that is to be catered to an entrepreneur as such, right from recruiting people for your business, right to marketing. Almost every field, you will have some kind of a problem that you will have to face. So what you have to do is foresee all that. If I am into a particular business, what are the probable problems that I'll encounter is something that you need to research upon. Once you're very good at that, having done your homework properly on that aspect, you will definitely get through in your business, which you want to venture upon. All of us are commerce students, commerce or business administration students, isn't it? We should have those skills to analyze things. Ma'am, there is another question. Hmm. Uh, what advice would you give to a person who is going to start their own business? So as I told you, develop the skills or the traits or characters that is required for an entrepreneur. So identify yourself. What are those uh, areas in which you lack such a trait or character? Develop on that and work on it. Of course, you need some amount of backing and motivation from your parents, from your friends, all that is required. It's only the mindset, your determination and will, as I told you, which will take you to greater heights once you start the business. Ma'am, how can one raise funding for his or her own business venture? Funding, some amount of uh, a bank loan will work out, provided you have the collaterals that needs to be given. In certain cases, there are uh, skill development courses which are conducted by the governmental organizations. Once you get a certificate in that, producing that certificate would enable you to take a bank loan. So research on that. And uh, the most ideal one for uh, a business to be started by youngsters like you will be uh, some amount of bank loan or microfinance, that kind. Guys, any other questions? I'll ask you a few questions. I told you there are two new sources of entrepreneurial financing. What are the two new sources of entrepreneurial financing that you have listened to now? You can either type it out or tell me. What are the two new sources of entrepreneurial financing that you learn today? So, this is the disadvantage of having online sessions.
wind up now. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful and inspiring session. Yeah, no duty is more urgent. Just a minute, just a minute. Shweta has given an answer, initial coin offering. Very good, Shweta. Thank you. The other one was accelerators, isn't it? Okay, continue. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful and inspiring session. No, no duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. Now, I call upon Kavya to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to one of my present here. It gives me great wishes to deliver the book of thanks. First and foremost, I thank Almighty God, our Vasavanda, for making this even the successful one. I take this opportunity to thank our management principal, Dr. C. Mohan Taylor. Vice Principal, Dr. P. V. Anita, ma'am, and Nipan Napin, ma'am, and Honorable Correspondent. Put good health, Kumar, constant support and encouragement in all steps ahead. I extend my warm thanks to Dr. P. S. Bhuneshwar for spending your time with us and sharing this amazing thoughts and the topic. Thank you so much, ma'am, for guiding us today. My heart for fat thanks to our YRC program officer, staff, and non teaching staff, and to our beloved friends. Once again, I thank you and one and all. Thank you. Thank you. Girls, please stay in the line and fill the feedback form. Can I leave Sultan? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ranjana, can I leave? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful session. Thank you. I request all participants to on your cameras for groups photo section.
participants who have filled the feedback forms can leave the meeting. Thank you. For me, the feedback form is not available in chat box. The feedback form has sent again. Please fill the feedback form. <laughs> 